Hi, folks. Yep, it's Sky. Well, I think it's time for a Sky story. And like so often happens, before we get started on the Sky story, we'll fill you in on a couple of things. Um, what I'm doing this evening, I'm making several videos. I'm doing several sty stories in advance. So the next several sty stories, you'll see me sitting here in this chair looking just as I do. Um, a new story every video. But the reason I'm doing several in a row is so that I've got some videos to post over the next week. Um, I have, from the 13th of January until the 17th of January, five days, off. <laughs> I can't believe it. I get five days with no work. It's wonderful. But between now and then, I get one day off. And on that one day, I've got all kinds of things I gotta get done. So I probably won't get a video done um, on that day. So I'm gonna try to get some sty stories done tonight, get them ready to post during the week. Um, I might do a topic-based video, I will see. But that's what I'm up to. Uh, and then that week that I have off, that five days. Sounds like great news. Well, it's kind of not. Because lo and behold, I've been waiting for two years to get five days in a row off. That's just amazing. What do I get? I get a notice in the mail that I've been selected for jury duty. And guess what? January 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th, I have to report for jury. I All I can do is hope and pray they settle these cases before those dates. Otherwise, I've got um, four of my five days off. I have to be available for jury duty. So I call in the night before, and if they say it's been settled, great. Then I can try to make plans for that following day to do something and get back in the evening to be able to find out if I got jury trial the following day. So, yeah, they managed to mess up my vacation a little bit with jury duty. But I'm a firm believer in jury duty. If they want me to serve, I'm there to serve. In fact, I actually told them I don't want jury pay. I don't want to be compensated if I'm showing up for jury trial. And they said they can't, they've never had anybody do that. They said, oh, no, we can't do that. We, got, we have to pay you for coming to the jury trial. I told them, you don't have to pay me anything that I don't want to be paid for. I said, if you send me a check, I'm going to run it through the shredder because um, that's just me personally. I just feel it's our civic duty to sit on the jury if we're called to sit on the jury. So, so the, I guess they just don't understand that. But here's a sip of coffee to them wanting to pay me a whole $15 for showing up to the jury trial. And it's not because I don't need 15 bucks. <laughs> I just, I feel it's just my civic duty to serve, so. Okay, let's get on with tonight's, well, today's, tonight's, sty story. This sty story is going to be called Documented Poop. That's a little odd, isn't it? Documented Poop. Now what in the world would Stye be thinking of if he's coming up with a story called Documented Poop? 
Well, this goes back to um, my days out in northwestern Montana. When we first relocated to Montana, um, the first year I was doing little odd jobs here and there, and, and it's it's sometimes it's tough to find work up in that neck of the woods. Um, so I put the word out that I was looking for something that would be full time and hopefully not just short term. And someone got back to me and said, oh, hey, I got just the job for you. Well, it was to go to work for a company called Longyear Corporation. Uh, and what they did was exploratory drilling in wilderness areas. Well, they did exploratory drilling all over the world, actually. But out there, it was in a, in a wilderness setting. And what you did was, is you went to where the, you were gonna, you establish a drill rig, and then you dr drilled, what we did was we drilled um, what we called flat holes. We're drilling at about a 45 degree angle, sometimes as little as a 30 degree angle. And we would drill in about 1,800, 2,000 feet. And we pulled the core samples out and then we, they'd come and pick the core samples up and they'd evaluate what's in the ground. And what it was exploratory drilling for was for silver deposits. Well, the position they had open was they needed somebody to drive a water truck. Now I'm going to have a couple sty stories about the water truck. But the water truck isn't tonight's story about documented poop. Well, so I took the job as a water truck driver. And I did, I drove water truck for a little over a month. Well then, our drill, there was always three men on the, on the rig. There was the driller, driller's assistant, and the water truck driver. They insisted three people. That's what they needed to run that ring. Well, our driller's assistant couldn't handle it. He just he just couldn't handle it. So he quit. Well, our driller got a hold of the company and said, Hey, I think Stye and I can drill this hole, just the two of us. I can run and get the water at the beginning of the shift to get us through to the end. We can, as long as we make our quota in the number of feet we drill, and we get it done quick enough, Stai can then haul a couple more truckloads of water so that the next shift is got a full tank of water when they start. And what we needed the water for is is the water was used to cool and lubricate the drill stem that went down in the ground. Okay, so now we're down to two guys on the rig. Well, everything was going good. We were doing a great job, there, you know, we're keeping up with everything. Then one day, they came to us and they said, we're gonna pull the rig and we're gonna move it. So, oh, okay. Where are you going to move it? Well, it was about about six or eight miles further back in the wilderness. But there were Forest Service roads that got you there. They're bad roads, really bad roads. And what they did was they took a D9 cat up to that location and they cleared a little patch just to put that rig in. They got everything relocated for us, and then we headed up for the first shift to start drilling the first hole. And we get up there and it's way in the back of Well we get up there and there's a company geologist, a company biologist, one of the company attorneys, 
and two individuals we didn't know who they were. Well, it didn't take long to figure out who they were. We had, our company had gone through a lawsuit and in a sense lost the lawsuit. We were not allowed to have like a satellite toilet on our site because a bear might come and knock it over and it would dump the chemical and the waste out on the ground and blah, 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 blah. So we're not allowed to have chemical toilets. They said, no, 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 you can't have that. And we said, well, it doesn't matter. We, we, you know, we go in the woods. That's what we do is just, we make sure we're nowhere near a water source and we go in and we dig a hole, do our business, bury it, go back to work. If you have to pee, you go away from the rig. There was an area that we frequently used to go pee. Oh no, oh no, 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 you can't be doing that. You're in a wilderness area. And we said, but we've been doing it all summer. And they said, yeah, but you're scared, you know, you're disrupting the wildlife doing that. And you're disrupting nature in general by doing that. And I said, well, how are we disrupting the wildlife? And they said, well, they smell that and they stay away. They, they, they won't even frequent this area for the longest time because of your waste. I said, that's a bunch of baloney. We got bears coming up here all the time, snooping around, and they don't, they're not bothered by it, not one bit. We've got elk that come walking right up to our rig. They don't care. And they said, no, no, we know better. They said, so you know better than that bears and the elk, huh? I said, okay. I said, so we work 14 hour shifts. 14 hour shifts. I said, I can't hold it for 14 hours. And they said, well, you won't have to. They said, because here's what you're going to do. They hand each of us about a 32 ounce plastic container, large mouth plastic container with a cap on it. And he said, you urinate in that. I, I said, well, okay. And I said, then do we take the cap off and go um, dump it out somewhere? They said, oh, no, no. And they hand me this little tablet of labels and they said, you have to fill one of these labels out. You put your name on it, the date, and you put that on that bottle. And you have to bring that off the mountain with you and turn it in so that we have a record that you urinated in that bottle instead of out on the ground somewhere. I said, oh Lord, fine. I said, what, what if you have to go do your other duty? They said, well, that's covered too. Out come these plastic bags. They're about a gallon. Yeah, I'd say they're a gallon. Ziploc bag. And they said, it's the same rule. If you gotta poop, you gotta poop in the bag. You wipe yourself and you put the, and you gotta put the paper in there. They said, we better see that paper in there too and then you seal it and then you write your name and the date oh and your shift what shift you work because there were three shifts a day um, oddly enough because we overlap the shifts overlap um, so <clears throat> I asked them I said what, what what what's the sense in that and they said, we need to document every poop you take and every time you pee. We have to document that it happened up here and it was brought down the mountain and turned in when you get to town. I said, so you're collecting and you're documenting my poop. I said, now that's a core sample of a different kind, for crying out loud. Here all this time we've been drilling these two-inch cores 
and sending those big long core turds off the mountain to be checked for silver. But for crying out loud, now they want core samples from us. We gotta put our poop in a bag and we gotta document that we took a poop. I said, what if I don't have to poop that day? They said, then you have to fill out this. And they gave me this little sheet. And I looked at it, it's a form documenting and certifying that I did not need to use the restroom during that shift. I had to certify that, sign it. And if we violate any of that policy, we don't document everything, including bringing our poop out in a bag. Instant termination, you're fired. <coughs> and the company would get a huge fine for it. So, somewhere out there, there's documentation of Sky's poop for about, well, it's about 80 days that we did that. The company had appealed the finding where the court had ruled that we had to do this to satisfy the environmental needs of that area. They had appealed it and they won, they won their case in the appeal. So we were very happy to find out that we didn't have to pee in a bottle and poop in a bag and document it, make sure it's documented every time we went to work. Oh, what you'll do for a buck, right? <laughs> so I'm sorry, but I, I, all the people that would say, oh, well, that's a good thing that you had to do that. I'm sorry, folks. To me, that was a foolish thing that we had to do. You're talking that the impact was absolutely minimal. Never saw any impact on the wildlife, period. In fact, drill rigs attract wildlife. We had deer, elk, bear, we had grizzlies that would come and they'd stay about a hundred yards out but they'd, they'd rear right up and they'd look at that rig when they'd hear that rig fire up it attracted them they came to see what the heck it was they weren't scared of us they were just curious as to what that machine was we're in the middle of the wilderness it's, it was all something new to them they they didn't recognize it as a threat but some people know better and I don't know maybe I don't know nothing and I'll probably get comments saying now yeah, you're right you don't know nothing because you were doing such a bad thing with them animals out there you're ruining the mother earth and this and oh it we were not we were not if anything because of their policy we were putting extra men into a plastic, non-degradable plastic bag, taking it to town, and it was getting dumped. They would record it, and then they dump it in a landfill somewhere. So now you got a bag that's going to last for 150 years before it degrades with a turd in it. Now you tell me that's better for our environment than us going up there and doing it the natural way. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't think so. But there you are. There's a nice story for you. Documented poop. Don't ever forget it. Someday they might come to you at work and say, we're going to start documenting your poop. We want to know where, when and where you took it. And then we're going to take it from you and we're going to document it. <laughs> Just a silly size nice story. True to fact, but silly all the same. So thanks for tagging along and listening to this Sty story, and we'll catch you again on the next one. So this is Sty saying, you all have a nice day. Bye-bye.